Focus. Idea. Innovate. Enable. Very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Network 18 and Honeywell India's Smart Building Awards 2017. Smart buildings really make a smarter nation, so we've established India's most authoritative and prestigious awards for smart buildings. This platform aims to recognize India's most intelligent commercial and residential buildings that are creating new benchmarks in operational and design excellence. Tonight is the culmination of the third edition of this journey that started about six months ago in a bid to identify buildings that are redefining smart by virtue of being green, safe and productive. Before we commence with the proceedings for this evening, let's take a look at the journey of this year's Honeywell Smart Building Awards. Today the word smart has come to define our very lives. From smartphones to smart cities, we constantly rely on technology to make our lives easier, safer and better. Be it living in smart homes, working in smart offices, or shopping in smart supermarkets. A smart building is at the core. The Honeywell Smart Building Awards is back in its third season, recognizing and awarding smart buildings from across India. Live city events discussed the role of smart buildings in India and encouraged building owners and facility managers to participate. More than 500 participants from 80 cities across India took the Honeywell Smart Building Survey to evaluate their smart buildings against three key parameters green, safe and productive. Based on their scores, the shortlisted nominees went through a rigorous on-site validation by KPMG, the awards process advisors and evaluators. And after a final assessment, we are ready to reveal the winners. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Network 18 and Honeywell present Smart Building Awards 2017. Connected homes, connected devices and connected people for a better quality of life. That's what being smart is all about. Network 18 went live with multi-city fora across Mumbai, Hyderabad, Bengaluru and Delhi NCR to demystify smart for the builder and architect fraternity and also seek inputs from players that have successfully implemented smart solutions in their operations. Network 18's group editor for real estate and urban development Manisha Natrajan was on ground spearheading that journey. So now I'd like to invite Manisha on stage to kindly come and deliver the welcome address. Good evening ladies and gentlemen, great to have all of you here to celebrate and recognize the best in class smart and productive buildings of India. It's been wonderful for me to personally have been part of this journey along with Honeywell. You know, we've traveled across key cities of India, interacted with various stakeholders, builders, architects, facility managers, and property consultants. It's only when you interact with those who really roll up their sleeves and get to work, you realize how much thought, creativity, and effort really goes into getting a building right. We are fortunate enough to be citizens of a country dotted with some of the most awe-inspiring structures, aren't we? Historical monuments. But today we face a collective challenge of creating spaces for young population of India in a rapidly urbanizing country. So for the winners of today's awards, I only have one thing to say. Thank you for creating such spaces which reflect a growing young India and its ambition to outperform the rest of the world. And I would like to say to the rest of my audience, who is of course a stakeholder in Building India, let's build, let's build right, let's build smart. Ladies and gentlemen, Chief Guest Sri Hardeep Singh Puri, Honorable Minister of State, or with independent charge of Housing and Urban Affairs, is with us a big round of applause 
So, we are privileged to have you as the chief guest. For these awards, may I request you to join us and share some precious words. Ladies and gentlemen, let me start by congratulating Network 18 and Honeywell who have come together this evening to give recognition to the best of smart buildings in India. This will promote innovation, design and operational excellence. This also reflects the government's approach to urban development and the challenges that we as a country face. Indian cities have no choice but to become both green and smart. Smart buildings are a response to the current challenges and to the concerns that we have. When we became an independent country in 1947, 17% of India lived in urban spaces. But that was 17% on a population of only 300 million. According to the 2011 census, 30% of India lives in urban spaces today, but that is 30% of a population base of something like 1.25 billion. We are expected by 2030, or rather 2031, that the urban population of India will be around 600 million, which would be approximately 40% of the total. Therefore, I don't think we have any option but to concentrate on the rejuvenation and smarting or smartifying of our urban spaces. It is impossible to look at smart cities in isolation. In other words, you cannot have a smart city unless you have integrated some of the other crucial requirements which are reflected in the Prime Minister's three flagship programs. Swachh Bharat, Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana and smart cities. This in turn presents a very big opportunity for entrepreneurs, architects, builders and the like. The scale of the opportunity can perhaps be imagined in the context that 700 to 900 million square meters of commercial and residential space needs to be built every year till 2030. By 2030, we will have a requirement and 70% of that requirement still needs to be built. And I think that is the opportunity which beckons us. Now I come to the smart buildings themselves. One of the things most often overlooked is that buildings produce 45% of global emissions. In other words, the carbon footprint, nearly 50% of it is determined by the buildings. Therefore, the case or the rationale for smart, smart buildings already stands made. Because smart buildings of the future will remit fewer emissions, they will become carbon neutral, but more than that, they will go a step far, further and become restorative. They will produce more energy than they consume, they will emit fewer greenhouse gases than they offset, and will have an immensely positive impact on our environment. Smart cities are not just about high-tech. We have a rich heritage of amazing buildings, forts, palaces, temples and mosques, which have taken shape after thousands of years of research and development or R&D as to how to keep them cool. Some of these are very secure, functional and comfortable. We must use traditional materials, techniques and design practices wherever possible to create a more sustainable and eco-friendly environment. And here I would like to offer a suggestion. When you team up with Honeywell, which is a world leader, and you team up with others in order to look for solutions, it's not that those smart city solutions must come from the West into us. There is something that we have practiced over thousands of years. We are a young country, seven decades plus as an independent country, but we are an old civilization, more than five, seven thousand years. I mean, we could have a discussion if you can add another one or two thousand years to that. And we have developed higher forms of sustenance. Before the advent of British colonialism, a Cambridge economist, Angus Madison, said that India contributed 23% of the world's GDP. So as the West 
was industrializing between 1750 and 1850, India's deindustrialization was taking place because of colonialism. What are the special characteristics of smart cities which I want to focus for this evening? One is surveillance systems. I believe these surveillance systems will lead to greater integration, greatly reduced crime, and improved safety for residents, particularly women. Number two, city-wide Wi-Fi networks. These will improve communication among citizens as well as that with various service providers. Third, e-governance and citizen feedback ma management will lead to improved social cohesion by increase in opportunities for citizen engagement, reduction in social inequalities, and reduction in response time for services for business. Number four, Integrated traffic management will increase the traffic speeds and reduce traffic congestion and hence cleaner air for people to breathe. And five, sensor-based technologies that we are using for leak detection, automated water supply and quality monitoring will directly impact universal accessibility for quality water, reduction in operating and maintenance costs, and reduction of waterborne diseases. Let me just try and summarize this. Technology gives us power, and I think the kind of smart cities that we are looking for and which we will get will give us tremendous power. As these smart cities take shape, it will become pertinent to assess how well a building is integrated with the rest of the city infrastructure. And that day is not too far. May I express the hope that the awareness that you generate this evening as part of your interaction will be the start of a process and that you will have many more events like this so that the awards which are one part of the process will lead to further dissemination of the need for finding smart solutions. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to welcome you to the third edition of the Network 18 and Honeywell Smart Building Awards. I'm personally very excited to be here today thanks to the Indian Government's 100 Smart Cities vision. There is no other country in the world that has created an initiative of this size and scale focusing on smart cities. So I want to take this opportunity to express our gratitude to Sri Hardeep Singh Puri, Minister of State, Independent Charge in the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, for being our chief guest today. We are truly honoured to have his presence at this country's premier awards honouring India's smart buildings. I wish to thank each one of the many dignitaries and most importantly the participants and top contenders for these awards for making the time to join us. This is an important initiative for India, you and us. I'm very excited to represent Honeywell and to brief talk, brief, briefly talk about why we must celebrate you, celebrate your vision and your contribution to the 100 Smart Cities vision. The vision is to develop 100 smart cities, rejuvenating 500 cities, which will transform India and boost economic growth. A significant investment, $16 billion, is being made by the government in this policy and vision. There are key attributes to a smart city, but one of the key attributes are smart buildings. Buildings consume 40% of global energy, 25% of water, 40% of the global resources and contribute more than a third of the greenhouse gases. But smart buildings can make a, a significant impact in reducing the energy consumption, the water consumption, reducing the maintenance and life cycle costs and importantly to the building owners even increase the value of that facility. But buildings are there for a purpose. 
Buildings are there for people. People spend most of their time, 80 to 90% of their time in buildings, and it has an impact on their lives, their comfort, the convenience, the productivity, the safety and the sustainability are all important. The smart building, building score measures smartness, but what is that? We researched it and brought it down to a simple three category assessment. Green, safe and productive. There are international standards out there that focus on energy efficiency and green, but it was very important for a smart building to have the criteria of safe and productive. In assessing those three categories, there's 15 asset groups that are assessed, and as a result of the assessment, the smart building score is a score out of 100. This started back in 2015 with the launch of a white paper and followed very shortly thereafter with the very first awards in India, which had 10 categories at that time, and uh, just over 200 participants from 34 cities. We also launched the score in the USA and in China. Then last year, in 2016, we evolved the framework even further with 13 categories. We had over 400 participants and we expanded the score to the Middle East. And now this year, we've expanded again to 16 categories and over 500 participants in the awards. Technologically driven assessment concept of Honeywell Smart Building Awards has been a great help in identifying gaps and improving our systems. It's a framework that you can apply and see where you can focus your efforts to improve your facilities. And lastly, Honeywell Smart Building Awards has been a learning experience for us and we tend to pass on the learning experience to our partner institutions. So as you learn, please, I encourage you to network and pass your learnings on to others so they can accelerate and improve their facilities with that experience. This year we, we started uh, with a launch in September for on-the-ground city events and the online self-assessment began. KPMG then led on-site verification for the shortlisted buildings in the award categories and led the, the validation of the final scores. Here's a, a, a consolidation of some of the results. And the smart building score is having an impact, as you can see. The top left here is the average of scores for all of the participants. And you can see this year complete, compared to last year, a significant increase in the average score from 36 to 52 and an increase in every one of the three categories for green, safe and productive. If I move to the bottom left, the winners as well have seen an increase in each of the categories year over year. An example of a participant who was part of the 2016 awards and was part of this year's awards, year over year improvement for that facility, going from a score of 62 to 77. And again, one of the categories, I think it was the, the significant, the, the category with the most increase in score was the industrial buildings. In 2016, we had 19 participants, this year 25, and the average score moved from 62 to uh, 70, a significant increase in the smart building score for those buildings. But the journey will continue. In 2018, we intend to, to continue to make this bigger and better. We're going to include the, uh, the category for under construction buildings, expand the geographic reach, and add new buildings and verticals to the awards. So I'd like to thank you all this evening and all of the participants and congratulate all of the award winners. I hope you've enjoy, enjoyed the evening and make the most of the awards event. Let's get started with our first set of awards. This one is for the smartest four-star hotel building. One huge round of applause.